Da 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 da. Once upon a time, there was an ancient unicellular organism named Luca. Its initials, L U C A, stand for the last universal common ancestor. As the name suggests, this is the latest organism from which all life on Earth stems. According to current research, on, we suspect Luca to have existed around 3.8 billion years ago. Luca wasn't the most advanced organism, and was in fact rudimentary. It was not unlike modern organisms. It results of billions of years of evolution. It was not an advanced or efficient organism at all compared to today's organisms. <laughs> Like Luca is a little sensitive. He doesn't like high temperatures. This was pretty disadvantageous because the early Earth was relatively hot. Luca probably had trouble <laughs> everything over 50 degrees. This is because Luca is thought to primarily have used RNA, or ribonucleic acid, which was sensitive to heat. This helps support the hypothesis that before and during Luca's lifetime, life forms entirely used RNA. Today, our genes are carried through DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, which can stand up better to heat. But it is proven that Luca didn't use DNA because scientists know that he didn't contain ribonucleic uh, reductases, which are the building blocks of DNA. DNA carries the biological instructions that made each individual organism different. RNA is used to make the building blocks of DNA, but it's commonly thought that Luca was composed of RNA, which is difficult to keep stable in such warm conditions. Just like with any cell, Luca had a cell membrane. However, it is thought that Luca could only make simple isoprenoid membranes. These membranes were a little more leaky than more modern membranes. However, this helped Luca survive its various flaws because it helped make it easier for genes and proteins to be shared with other organisms, making it easier to keep living systems alive for generations to come and making it harder for favorable traits to die off. He was pro geno and used genes as a template for building proteins. His process was doing so was very confusing <laughs> and would often end up with a different extraneous protein than it intended. Watch as he attempts to close the protein. <laughs> However, Luca had a very rich metabolism, meaning he could break down food quickly to get nutrients and energy. Luca would produce enzymes to break down food in order to extract the nutrients. Watch as he eats. Uh, this. Mm. <laughs> as you can see, Luca is now energized and fed, since he rapidly broke down his food for nutrients. <laughs> <laughs> Luca was the first organism to develop an organelle to store sustainable energy, causing it to increase, increase its efficiency. Organelles are smaller units inside a cell which perform certain tasks. In this case, this organelle has been passed down through the years and is now known as mitochondria and found in every cell. As we stated before, the last universal common ancestor was important because, it, because all life originated from it. This is due to the fact that Luca and his offspring were able to divide and reproduce quickly, therefore forming the three domains of life. These three include eukaryotes, bacteria like this one, and archaea. I'm sure you all know what bacteria are. Archaea are similar to bacteria, except they thrive in extreme conditions. Eukaryotes are more complex and include fungi, plants, animals, and protists which can be unicellular or multicellular, and don't produce tissue. However, these cannot survive in, the, in as extreme conditions as archaea. All right, that's enough, Luca. Whatever the downsides, Luca stage allowed for advanced protein synthesis, which enabled it to create more cellular variants that allowed the three domains of life to come directly from it. These include the aforementioned eukaryotes, bacteria, and archaea. Now, of course, we don't have any examples of Luca today as it is extinct but we can understand it through the study of current life around us. This is a similar concept to how the etymology of languages are studied. A group of scientists did just that and looked at a large database of all the different kinds of proteins to look for common structures and traits. What they found was that 5 to 11% of the proteins were similar, showing the traits that must have originated from a common ancestor. <laughs> Now it is clear that 
clear that despite Luca's problems and flaws, it is still an incredibly or important organism, and I don't know where any of us would be today without it. Luca, please take a bow. <laughs> All right.